a parts tray gravity battery. Of course, parts needed is a parts tray. One input or ne first negative electrode hanger. Five interconnects and the positive output. And six zinc electrodes that you'll be putting in the unit assembly is relatively simple take first positive output and put your interconnects interconnects in place and your final negative output it's now ready for putting your copper sulfate in and putting your electrodes in place putting your copper sulfate in is relatively simple go a few chunks each cell Now, put your zinc electrodes in. Now it's ready to put your water in. We'll do that in a second. Alright, it's ready for filling. I've got a 3 volt LED when I showed in the earlier video connected to the battery with a current meter in between so you can see how much current it's producing. Since it's a 6 cell battery and a 3 volt LED it should fully load plus fully load the cells where they will produce a pretty good majority of the current. Add water to them and see what happens. The water in the right sound. Making the zinc literally float. It's so light. Already got light. When first contact with water, providing about 2.3 milliamps in climbing across the LED light. So from scratch to already got that power output. And just under a few minutes, and as it goes, the current will continually climb as the copper sulfate slowly 
goes into the solution. It's already up to 3 milliamps and climbing. A little bit later, give it some time to settle into operation. Then we'll check back with it later on to see how well it progresses as of 15 hours after the failing of the battery. The current is now 30 milliamps. About the maximum at a small LED could tolerate. And it's still climbing. So, go check back on it later. The neat thing is, with 30 milliamps, it's enough to operate a standard AM FM shortwave radio. If you hook the radio across the LED and use the LED as a shunt regulator to keep the voltage of the battery at 3 volts because if you didn't have the LED then the full 6 volts would go into the radio and cause radio to be overdriven but if you hook the radio across the LED it's already on the batteries then it forms a shunt regulator you can turn up the volume of the radio and the brightness of the LED will diminish as the radio pulls more current at 3 volts until you turn it up bright enough that the LED goes out which is close to full brightness which is close to full volume so even at 15 hours into the operation of the battery it's already to the point using the slow method that with just putting straight water in it that you can already run a radio to full capability pretty much you know, check on, on it later approximately 24 hours after commissioning the battery the current output is about 40 milliamps and seems to be leveling off Based on its current output and with the size of the zinc electrodes I've got in it, I estimate probably about another 10, 5 to 10 hours before the electrodes start reaching a state of full consumption. And at that point, of course, the current will start dropping off as the electrodes are fully consumed. And this is what it looks like with the light from the LED running off of the gravity battery. Pretty decent. If you had it up in a high area of the room, it'd produce a pretty decent light for moving around the room of a late night. Stuff. As I said, the Output is hanging around 40 milliamps and it seems to have leveled off at about that point. Current amount of time after commissioning of the battery 36 hours. Current start to fall off down to 24 milliamps. And the electrodes, the zinc is starting to show signs of being the last stages of being fully consumed so this battery is on the last stages of its life After about 36 hours of being put together peak current during the operational time is around 40 41 milliamps this is uh, dropping off to about 24 milliamps now. And as the zincs are consumed, it'll drop off to pretty much zero, of course. I think the battery has reached the end of its life. Most of the plates are pretty much gone. It's producing less than a milliamp. And the light. You just got a light glow to it. 
And that is back. Let's see here. The current time is about 48 hours after commissioning of the battery. I'll disassemble the thing in a second here. Show you what the parts look like after everything is said and done. You can see the condition of the zincs pretty much well gone. Uh, the condition of the interconnects show the condition of the battery. Three of the cells had reverse bias because it wasn't generating any current. And you can see the zinc plating. One of uh, the other three cells show bright copper on the positive c current collector, which is the copper that's normally depleted. P copper that's normally plated during operation of the cells are the ones that are reversed. They have copper underneath, but then the layer of zinc is plated over top of it from the reverse current. And you can see in the battery cells that the three cells that had reversed are all pretty much clear, which means the copper sulfate had been depleted. Uh, that one, that one, and that one still has some color to them. So, if I added a little bit more copper sulfate in those three cells, then it would have I probably operated a little bit longer before the current dropped off. But all in all, it pretty much put about as much copper sulfate in as was fully consumed. Could have used a little bit more, but not much. So that pretty much finishes an overview of a gravity cell battery from start to finish and end of life. Hope you learned something from the video. Take care and take it easy.